Hey, it's Mike Missanelli, and the interview you are about to listen to is brought to you by Metro PCS. Unlimited talk and text starting at just $30 a month, and you never sign a contract. Call 888-8-METRO-8 or just visit MetroPCS.com. Unlimit yourself. So on the line right now is the moment we've been waiting for. Now, I've known Tim Donaghy for a really long time, and uh, to say he got jammed up in a situation would be an understatement, and he's got a book out right now. It's called Personal Foul, First Person Account of the Scandal that Rocked the NBA. And of course, we all know his story, and we welcome him right now, Mr. Tim Donaghy. Tim, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Mike? Thanks for having me. Good. Listen, Tim, I, I've known you for a long time, but I, I hope I can also be direct with you in, in asking the questions here uh, on this particular situation. And I, and I know you, you're a guy that's not going to duck any of the questions I throw at you, right? Throw them at me. I'm ready. All right. Sounds good. Now, for, the first question I need to ask you is, wh- why did you write this book? What, what was the main motivation for you to write this book? I think the main motivation is, is there were a lot of misconceptions about what I did and how I did it. Uh, you know, obviously right now I'm in a time in my life where I have a lot of bills to pay, and uh, I think it was a unique story with unique cir- circumstances that um, people would be interested in. All right, and the unique circumstances are that, that you got caught up in a situation where you knew the knowledge that you had about the NBA in general, about players, about coaches, could help you profit. Is that pretty much what, what, what covers this whole scenario? I, I think you're, you're right on line there. Okay, so i, I got to ask you the question then. Uh, when, when the NBA put a bullseye on you as this rogue official, why did you not come out with any evidence of uh, other situations that you, you may have known that would have kind of like ameliorated the blame just on you if you had that kind of information? I think at the time when the investigation was going on, I was directed by the FBI to basically not discuss uh, the investigation with anybody other than them and my attorney. Uh, You know, obviously after, uh, you know, I'm sentenced, I go to jail for a period of time, and and now's really the first opportunity I've had to discuss it. Okay, so you're discussing it in the book. In the book, are you naming any other officials that you have knowledge of that may have gone down this path? No, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, the Petovich report uh, states that 60 out of 60 uh, NBA referees gambled, but as far as other referees gambling on NBA games, I have no knowledge of that. Okay, so doesn't that kind of make you then the rogue official? First of all, did you gamble on the games? Did you place bets on the games? Yes, I did, and and obviously I I made some poor choices, and, uh, you know, I made some decisions that were obviously uh, not in the best interest of me or my family. Do you have knowledge, we're talking with Tim Donaghy, who obviously is the NBA official that was kind of blackballed out of the league and, and got all kinds of legal difficulties, now writing a book. Do you have knowledge that you're withholding that some N- other NBA officials gambled on games? Uh, no, I, no, I don't have any information along those lines. All right, well, then you see, do, do you see where I'm going with this? If the NBA has painted you out as a rogue official and you don't have any other information that other guys have bet on games or got involved in this way, then aren't you really a rogue official? I think I'm a rogue official in the fact that I made some terrible choices and, and I place, uh, you know, bets on NBA games. But I think that the bottom line is, is these games were predictable to me. Uh, it was a situation where uh, I, I could pick, predict them at a high rate based on relationships between referees and players, referees and coaches, and referees and owners. It, well, you've made a statement that you really did not directly fix games, but isn't that essentially fixing games? If you are making calls, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, based on, on, on knowledge or you have an axe to grind with somebody or an official, you know an official has an axe to grind, isn't that basically fixing games? I think fixing games is a, a situation where you're blatantly making calls that you know are incorrect and putting star players uh, to the bench, a Shaquille O'Neal or, or a Kobe Bryant or a LeBron James, based on a bet that you made on the game. And, and I certainly didn't do that. I, I certainly refereed the games uh, to the best of my ability because if I was out doing that, I would have been throwing up red flags, and I certainly would have been detected by the NBA and the FBI uh, well before I was. Talking to Tim Donaghy, who is obviously uh, natu- from this area, he's a Havertown native. And, uh, uh, Tim, just tell me about what your life is right now. I mean, w- w- what is it like? I mean, do you feel like you've had a total meltdown with life? What, what's your life like? You, you're not together with your wife. You're living in an apartment. Try to describe what, what your life is right now. 
obviously my my life is uh you know been broken a little bit, but uh, I think with the same hard work and determination that enabled me to become an NBA referee, at some point uh, I, I am going to be successful again. Uh, obviously, I made some terrible, terrible decisions that not only affected me but affected my family. So, uh, you know, I have a, a tough road ahead of me, but uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Uh, you're no longer together with your wife. Is there is there a chance that you get back with her? Because the, one of the stories was that she stuck up for you when when you were rearrested and you missed some kind of a, a work related situation, court ordered work day. Uh, you said you were getting rehab. She came out and spoke on your behalf. Are, are you cl- patching that, things up with her and your family? Uh, no, I, I think it's a situation where we're just working to be to have a strong friendship. I think our goal is to. You know, support our kids both emotionally and financially. And, uh, you know, we have four beautiful kids together, and we certainly want what's best for them. And what's best for them is that their mother and father um, have a strong relationship and, and uh, are able to be there for all of them. I, I got to ask this question from, from the jump. What lured you into actually thinking about doing this? Now, what was the moment that hit you? You're an NBA official. You're on top of the world. A lot of guys would kill to, to go through the ranks and get to the NBA like you did. What was the moment where you actually thought you could further benefit aside from your NBA salary? I, I think it's a, it's a situation where you talk about an addiction. Uh, you know, when you suffer from an addiction, which, you know, I have in regard to gambling, you rationally do things. Um, you know, better wrong, and it's not till you you sit back and you realize when you're caught how and why you you did that. And I think it's just something where I I got addicted to gambling. I placed bets every day, um, you know, all day, and and it was a situation where I felt it was easy and predictable, and and I crossed the line that I shouldn't have. How'd you get addicted to gambling? I I, re- I read there's a story in the Inquirer today on you that said that you actually had someone else take the SAT for you, and that helped you get into, into Villanova. I guess that's a predisposition to cheat at a very young age, right? Uh, obviously, you know, we all have choices to make in life, Mike, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm no different than anybody else. I've made some poor choices. Uh, you know, obviously I fell in front of the world to see, and, and all my poor choices have, have been put out in the media. But, uh, you know, I don't think that really has anything to do with the fact that, you know, I chose to um, make a poor choice in betting on NBA games. We're talking to Tim Donaghy, the uh, NBA official, obviously, who was uh, removed from the league, and he's wrote a book about his experiences. Uh, Tim, at the time, I remember the, the NBA came after you hard, and they would really tried to isolate you. Uh, and at that time, you had knowledge of other officials who maybe bet in casinos or placed other bets on, on golf courses or whatever, and that technically was a violation of NBA rules. And, and I think at that time you were kind of perturbed that they, the NBA decided to push all that stuff under the carpet. All right, what is your relationship? What do you feel about the NBA and David Stern right now? You know, obviously David Stern made some comments. He put himself in the corner in regard to that, stating that legal gambling, uh, you know, will cost you your job and illegal gambling will cost you your freedom. Obviously, uh, after the um, investigation with the NBA referees, he, he couldn't do anything about that, and he, he couldn't stand behind that quote because a lot of them were involved in gambling. Uh, you know, I, I truly believe that with everything that's gone wrong with the NBA over the years, he's been able to, um, you know, change some things and, and rebound from them. And I think this is uh, another example where um, he's going to survive, and hopefully the league's going to be bigger and stronger in the future. All right, now you've made some assertions that NBA officials, and your knowledge of NBA officials, if it was a certain coach that they disliked, it's a certain player they disliked, you would, you would bet that game uh, against the, 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 the people who the officials disliked. H- how did the NBA try to influence how officials call the certain game in any form. In other words, if a if a benefit of the NBA to extend a playoff series, how would the NBA try to manipulate the officials to to play along with this? I think uh, when you talk about how officials are trained and prepared for playoff games, if if you're in a situation where a team's up two games to none or three games to one, you know we had meetings during the day and they would put the TV screen up on the wall. And they would basically show you plays uh, that happened in the previous games, and they would point out those plays that went wrong or against the team that was down in the series, and very few plays that were wrong or 
or went against the team that was up in the series. And I think that programs a referee and, and pushes them in the direction to look for certain things and, and give that team that's down in the series an advantage. So that was a certain message that the NBA, not so subliminally, would send to you guys that, hey, it's in your best interest to extend the series because that's what the league is going to smile on. And not only that, it was openly discussed, uh, you know, uh, about extending series and not being a referee that made calls in the game that uh, led to a team being eliminated. So do you realize what that allegation says about the league and, and the trust that, that fans of the NBA now can have for the NBA if that kind of thing's going on? If you're in a playoff series and you know that the league itself is trying to influence that series to go longer? Come on, Mike, you're, you're a sports fan, uh, and especially sports fans in Philadelphia are very, very intelligent people. I mean, if you look at the history of the unusual things that have gone o on in the NBA in the last 10 or 15 years, you can't sit here and tell me that you don't see or hear things that are highly unusual and, and you shake your head out and, and wonder how these things have happened. So, so you're saying we should have no trust in the NBA? I'm saying there should definitely be a trust issue there, yes. Okay, now let's talk about the certain specific players. Because the one guy in the news in Philadelphia just came back to the team, Allen Iverson, number three. Now, I have sat courtside at games, and I see the abuse that you guys take as officials. And, and I think maybe subconsciously, maybe that had something to do with you trying to grab everything you can get out of the NBA if you're going to take, take that kind of crap from game to game to game. But Allen Iverson apparently was universally disliked by officials in the NBA. Why? I don't want to say universally disliked because there was one referee that would kiss him at the captain's meeting before the game. But for the most part, there were positive and negative relationships, and Allen Iverson was certainly one of those players that was involved in those relationships. And I, I use uh, that scenario to place winning bets on a lot of games. So if there was a guy, an official that you knew disliked Allen Iverson, you would bet against Allen Iverson that night, no matter what the line is. Because it's one thing to bet against a team, but you also have to figure out what the line is. Well, you know, when you talk about a line, uh, I would make my own line. I would look at the referees, uh, look at the scenario of if it was a home or away game. And, and I'm not saying every night one referee was on a game with Allen Iverson. I automatically bet against him. But I would predict my own line. And if the line was... Uh, say five in the paper, and before I knew it was five in the paper, if I had a mental line that it was ten, I would tell somebody to bet that game. And, and, and how successful were you with that kind of a rationale? Uh, I picked the games uh, between 70 and 80 percent correct, yeah. more uh, towards 80 percent in the playoffs. All right. Now, the Thomas B Batista is the guy that, that, obviously, did you watch him on the HBO thing? Uh, yes, I did. Well, what, what reaction did you have from Batista singing the way he did on that show? You know, uh, I just because uh, he intimated that you were fixing games. And, you know, in other words, by not answering that question and, and kind of rolling his eyes, his no comment spoke volumes. It, it did, and, and, but I mean, you have to look at, at, at the source there. You know, he also claimed that we bet on forty-seven games that I refereed in the time that we were. Uh, you know, I was giving him picks, and from the time frame that I was giving him picks, I only refereed thirty-three games in the NBA. So. I think there was some distortion there of, of what he thinks the facts are and what the facts actually are. All right. Now, the facts, according to him, were that you got $2,000 a game if, if the game hit. And that means you didn't even have to place a bet. So are you telling me you got that 2000 and you placed a bet of that kind of a substantial amount on the game as well? No, no. It was just a situation where he was giving me $2,000 per correct pick. So you wouldn't bet on that game? If he was, you were giving him the correct pick, why wouldn't you also bet on the game and get his 2000 Because, Mike, you know, it's not easy for an NBA referee to place bets on games. It was a situation where uh, when I got involved with uh, – that individual that, uh, you know, I was just hoping to get through the season and uh, put this all behind me and somehow keep my job as an NBA referee. We're talking to Tim Donaghy, a Havertown native and former NBA official who uh, got caught in the, in the big scandal that brought him down and now has written, written a book about it. Um, let, let's, let's talk about the, the profits that you get on this book, Tim, uh, because state laws are different and, you know, some state laws say you can't profit off of a crime. Where is the fine line for you? You're, the judge is allowing you to take some of this money and pay the restitution that you owe. How much can you profit off of this? You know, I'm not sure at this point, but uh, I know that uh, we have received a, a letter from the United States Attorney's Office to where 
the profits from the book will go towards restitution. All right. So, so what? What? Let me. How do you feel about what you did to the profession? We just had a call a little while ago. A guy said, "He said I'm an official in college, and you can't imagine now how we're looked at or what people say to us because of this Donaghy thing." And he affect uh, ruined a lot of our reputations by coming out with this. How do you feel about that? I mean, obviously, uh, again, I made some terrible choices, and I wish I hadn't done what I did. Uh, if I could turn back time, I would, but we all know, uh, you know, that that's not an option. And unfortunately, uh, I have to live with what I did, and, and I want to do the best I can to share my story with other people and, and see if I can turn this negative into a positive. Uh, you claim in the book that you were threatened and your family was threatened by the mob. Now, Batista says there was no mob involvement. What, who's right? Well, who's right? I guess that's a question for, uh, you know, the FBI agents, uh, obviously. You know, I know what he did, and he knows what he did, and if he wants to deny it at this point, you know, that's up to him. Uh, uh, so what are, what do you say, that there was mob involvement, that you were threatened by the mob? Why were you threatened by the mob? Uh, I, I think they wanted these picks that um, were given to somebody else that were being funneled through them behind my back, and when we had stopped gambling for a while, they wanted these picks to continue. How did you actually make the pick? Take, take me through the process of you actually placing a bet or giving this kind of information to, to profit from. Uh, I would look at the master list of referees and the game uh, that they were set to officiate, and, and I would come to my own conclusion of what I thought the line should be in Vegas. Uh, I would write it down on a piece of paper, go to the newspaper, and if it was a difference of five points, I would tell them to bet the game. And you would call who? I would call a uh, high school friend of mine who relayed the information to somebody else. And you, you would talk in code to this high school friend? Yes, I would. Okay. I would uh, describe uh, the city of uh, the game that I wanted to bet, and I would talk about his um, brother, uh, one brother, if I wanted the home team to be bet, and the, uh, his other brother, if I wanted the away team to be bet. And so how did they eventually get you? What, what, what was the linchpin where they snagged you? Uh, it was ho heard over a Gambino wiretap, and they basically, uh, you know, backtraced it to me. But you weren't actually given information. You were talking in code. So how'd they get you? You know, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not privy to the entire investigation, but obviously they had, uh, you know, some type of information that it was me. All right. Now you, you served obviously some some time in prison, and in prison you claim that uh, some kind of a, a connected mob guy assaulted you and tried to essentially break your legs and then hit you with a pipe. Can, can you talk about that at all? How did that transpire? Because there's a lot of people out there that doubt that that story is true, and I'm sure you've heard that. Uh, no, I haven't heard that because obviously, it, you know, in my mind it's true, and I have the damage to my knee to prove it, but it was a situation where a guy claimed he was involved in uh, or associated with people in New York, and, uh, you know, he claimed that I was a rat and, you know, basically was going to get a gun and shoot me and, and break my legs and had a long paint rolling stick that he was using and, and took some shots at me uh, at my knee. And what, and what did you do? Did you try to defend yourself? Did you try to hide? What did you do? Did you engage now, him? I, I basically put my hands up in the air and backed up because I was warned that if I was in any altercations that, uh, you know, I was going to be moved to a higher level prison. And by the after he took the first couple shots, there were some guards that were right on the scene, and, and they shackled and handcuffed the guy and took him out. And how did you survive in prison from that point on if you knew you had that kind of an enemy in the general population? Well, you know, it's basically something that wasn't easy, and, uh, you know, fortunate enough, I was able to get through it. Talking to Tim Donaghy, the NBA official who uh, lost his career over a betting scandal, and he has a book called Personal Foul, First Person to Count, the Scandal that Rocked the NBA. To me, two more questions. Number, okay. number one, the, 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 the whispers that Michael Jordan had to leave the league for a little bit because he was involved in some gambling scandals. Do you have any firsthand knowledge that that is true? No, I don't. I, I just heard the whispers like everybody else that uh, he was asked to leave for a period of time. The whispers from who? Among the uh, the uh, the uh, referee fraternity or the referees, um, you know, coaches that you may see out at some time or, or, you know, lower level league executives. What is your feeling about that? If you could offer an opinion, do you think it's more true than not? I mean... I would certainly think it's more true. How does the greatest athlete in the world at his prime step away from dominating a sport, uh, you know, 
to go take a, a shot at playing baseball when, he, you know, obviously he couldn't hit a volleyball. Uh, all right, this is the last question. We're talking to Tim. And, Timmy, listen, I appreciate you coming on with me this long. I really do. Uh, and I hope to cross paths with you down the road somewhere. How do you get a job now? You know, it, 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 Hans, Jose Canseco wrote a kind of a book like this. He can't get a sniff at a job. You have to start your life completely over. You fill out an application no matter where you go. you got to put down Tim Donaghy. The, obviously, your name is kind of infamous. If the employer looks up and says, oh, you're in relation to Tim Donaghy, the NBA official, you're not going to get that job. I mean, have you thought about what you're going to do for the rest of your life? I, I have, and I think there's a difference between Jose Canseco and myself, and that difference is, you know, he, he didn't realize or he doesn't understand what he did was wrong. Uh, and, and I certainly understand that I made some terrible choices and, and I did something wrong, and I think there's a difference there. And, you know, I think there's an opportunity here to share my story with other people uh, across the country in uh, these athletic departments and, you know, hopefully there's a situation where I can market myself to uh, assist other people. So so basically your life looks like you can give motivational sp- speeches? Is that basically what you're thinking of doing? Uh, I don't know if it's a motivational speech or, or whatever, but it's a situation where I can uh, share my story with others and hopefully allow them to benefit. How How, how is the public to believe that you're, you're going to be a different guy or you are a different guy, that you've gone undergone some kind of a transformation here? Uh, I think after you read the book, you'll understand that I'm very remorseful uh, about what I have done, and and I'm I'm hoping that you know again I can turn this into a uh, situation where other people can learn from it. Is it your hunch that uh, there will be another scandal involving some kind of a sports official? Uh, and, and let's say specifically the NBA. Do you think something else will come out eventually? I mean, I hope not, but. Uh, the people that I do talk to that are involved in the, in the uh, gambling uh, around the country are um, adamant that there's other, certainly other people who have done what I've done, but I was the only one that was caught. Do you, do you talk to the NBA officials, the, the colleagues that you had before, or are you pretty much uh, persona non grata with all these people? No, I haven't talked to them. I've talked to other people that are associated with the league, but I haven't talked to any of the referees. All right, Timmy, listen, uh, good luck to you, and uh, good luck with the book, and, and I hope uh, your life evolves to the point where you really uh, can be proud of it. Thanks very much for coming on. All right, I'll give you a call. Thanks, Mike. All right, that's uh, Tim Donaghy.